Hello everyone! It's time to talk about the fourth and the fifth episode of Sangatsu no Line. Well, the fourth episode was good, it was entertaining, it was pretty lighthearted for all the time. Aside one single scene with a girl, which we saw in the first episode at the beginning, basically being on top of Re, And I really wonder, well, no, I'm not really wondering what happened, because my imagination can run wild and get to some pretty fucked up points. So I personally think that there was some kind of stuff going on. But I will leave it aside for now, because I believe we will see more of it in the future. And we also find out that Akari has a weakness for round and fluffy and these really fluffy, round, soft, shiny things like the Let's call him Ray's best friend and his rival. And her expression was so lovely, it really made me wonder if she fell for him right at this moment. So it was pretty funny and the episode was overall really lighthearted. And with the stalking scene of the butler was really really funny. Because Ray's rival didn't realize what was going on. And yeah, it was a good funny episode. Which was a nice break from the third episode with a drama going on. And after a lighthearted episode, what we need is obviously drama. And with drama, I obviously also mean the good kind of drama. Not the melodrama with the forced happy endings and <coughs> Clannard. Well, okay, joking aside, I enjoyed Clannard. I just didn't like the protagonist and the main heroine and some of the other characters as well. But yeah, okay, let's move on. We are not talking about Clannard here. So the fifth episode started with Re getting a call from Akari and Ending up going to Momo's kindergarten and picking her up. So, so far so good. A warm, nice feeling, how he walks home with her. And then there was this scene with the dog. It was pretty funny. The dog running after her and just wanting to play. And it is really nice to see how they voice the animals. So you really see, even if you kind of know what they want, but with the way they voice it, it's just really, really funny and I enjoy it. And then Momo fell. She hurt, she cried, they picked her up and carried her home. And it was a really lovely feeling how he has this major, big, brotherish side. And then we get a view of his past, which was dark. No, it was really depressing and the drama was spot on. And I loved every moment of it. There were characters that were basically on a level of yeah, how can such human beings walk around with not being imprisoned for the rest of their lives, but that's humanity and if someone dies who has is a bit on the rich side of life, the first thing a lot of the family members will do is 
discussing, fighting, talking about the stuff left behind. Most likely money or positions or items, all that kind of stuff. And it is ugly. I personally don't like it. And it makes you really wonder what is going on in their heads. Obviously nothing good. And we saw that, well, we knew that Ray's parents died and he was left behind and grew up in a, another family. And when Mumma told Akari and Hinata was her name that Ray cried, Akari said that he had a sister. And then we go back to the flashback with how he was there in the room and standing in front of the three corpses of his family. And how he didn't really know what to do. And at the one with the family members and no one talking to him as the son left behind, which was cruel as fuck. Seriously, it hurt really. And I, it's hard to express the feeling without going on a rampage about how shitty his relatives are. And I mean it in a literal way. So then came his father's friend and rival of Shogi, who was often visiting him and playing Shogi with Re, and comparing Re with his father on how they played it. And then he just looked around at the others of Ray's family and the way he looked around he just asked him if he liked Chogi and he said yes it was basically a lie because he liked Chogi not because of a sport but because it was a way to spend some time with his busy father And with that lie, he was picked up and started to live with his father's friend. And we got some more th scenes how he became better and better at Shogi. And starting to beat this guy's own children. And the son that was is around the age of Rey, stopping with it and starting to play video games. And the older sister beating him up. She was sitting him, not only once, but a couple of times. After losing to him, she hit him. And she was punished. She had to stand outside for a while. And... This gave me the impression that she is quite explosive. She's not holding back, she's just straightforward and more on the violent side of life. And I think there is more to it. Because personally I think she just didn't hit Re while he was living with them. Because with a scene from the previous episode, the fourth episode, when she was over him, basically almost riding him, I personally think that there was some kind of sexual maybe abuse. I don't know, but I really think it is going in that direction and I would like to 
get deeper into that part. Not because of the sexual abuse, but about her character. If she has changed over the years, if she's still the same, or if she's gotten worse. And also why she was going to that way. I mean, she called him Zero, and she didn't even see him as a human being. So it wouldn't be such a far away point of going to sexually abuse him. Because she didn't see him as a human being. And with the scene when Ray called that guy dead, Kyoko, the daughter, was pretty much pissed off. So this may be also one of the reasons, because he got better at Chogi, she was forced to leave the Federation, because she couldn't win against him. And even if she did make it to the first dan, there were stronger shogi players and it would be bad for her. She would basically lose. That is what her father told her. So I also can see that she was afraid to lose the affection of her father. And it's a natural feeling. Especially if you're young. Another child moves in, lives with you, and the father pays more and more attention to him. He's not rude to him or is doing bad stuff because he's just teaching him with a shogi, being the master, and he gets better and better and better. And obviously the children were unhappy with the situation. Not only because they lose in shogi, but they were afraid. And it's natural. So I really, really wonder if he will see them again. Especially if they had changed. If they are not afraid anymore. Because Ray basically left with the end of middle school and became a pro shogi player, stopped going to high school. And this makes me really curious about how the two kids will see Ray in the future. So these are basically my impressions that I got from this episode. And I'm not even talking about the way that it was animated and presented. It is just such a beautiful way to do it. And if I would wear a hat, I would remove it just for a shift, being this awesome. So yes. And with this, I wonder what we will get in the next episode. So if you will get a more lighthearted episode, like last week, or are going to continue on the drama ride. Yeah, I'm really curious and I love this show. It's one of my favorite shows from this year. And it's really, really growing on me with each episode that we will get, because it's just a good way to do it. So, yeah, if you want to talk about it, leave a comment below. Or if not, just give me a like or maybe press the sub button and follow my other videos. With this, I will wish you a nice Sunday evening or morning or day and a good start in the next week. Adios!